good Friday morning. Another sunrise with Pastor Hayton. I'm sure that most of the people that watch my little devotional each day is watching way beyond, uh, way past sunset, uh, sunrise. Maybe some of you are watching at sunset. But uh, we come up with sunrise with Pastor Hayton because it's a good way to begin the day. Spending a few minutes with something that I hope will be somewhat inspirational and uh, maybe even a little bit interesting. I think inspiration can be interesting, don't you? And I try to keep things inspirational and interesting and share a little bit of my life with you and a little bit of the things that go through my pretty little head each day. And believe me, my mind never stops. Sometimes I go to bed at night and I just wish there was an off and on switch where I could just switch my mind off. Just, uh, you know, make it quit for a little while so I can uh, go to sleep. But uh, it seems like my mind is always in gear, and I just have so much that goes through my mind each day and into the night many times, and uh, some of it good, some of it not so good. So I try to dwell on that which is good. The Bible says whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and so on and so forth, think on these things. So sometimes we kind of have to weed things out of our mind, don't we? And I know that uh, there are times that we have a difficult time weeding things out of our mind. I think one of the most important times is our prayer time. And yet it seems as though that is one of the most difficult times for a lot of us Christians because we go to prayer to commune with God, to fellowship with Him, and it seems like that it's always something that comes into our mind to distract us from our communion with God. Now, I often say that prayer is really important to the Christian. I don't say that. It's just simple, simply an elementary truth. I think it's a very vital truth. And one reason that I believe that it's so important is because the devil does his best to disrupt us and to distract us in our prayer time. And so, you know, there are times that I know that I need to pray. People have asked me to pray about certain things. And, of course, we all carry burdens upon our heart. You may see the computer screen. I've got four wonderful children. There are families that weigh heavy upon my heart all the time. And I, I know the importance of praying for them and asking God's watch care over them and His guidance throughout their lives. And, and so I know I need to pray for my family and I need to remember those requests that people ask me to, to pray with them about. Now, I know there's some times that people will say, Now, Brother Hayton, I've got a special burden and a special need, and I want you to pray with me about this this week. And then you see them again, and they say, I want to thank you for praying. And all of a sudden you realize that you didn't pray for them. It just slipped your mind entirely. Now, that does happen. I have to make an honest confession that even though people ask me to pray on a certain day or for a certain situation, sometimes I am distracted and I fail to do so. Well, what do you do when somebody thanks you for a prayer that you haven't prayed? Well, the Bible says there's a time to speak and a time to keep silent. And I just figure that's one of those times that it's time to keep silent and uh, vow within your heart that you're going to do better the next time. But nonetheless, prayer or our communion with God or quiet time or communication with Him, there's very little that is more important and there's really nothing that should take precedence over our prayer time. And like I'm saying, it's so easy sometimes for our mind to just kind of uh, get off of the, the secular. It's easy for our mind uh, to dwell on the things that are round about us instead of focusing our mind upon God. And I know that Jesus was instructing his disciples on how to pray. And he said, When thou prayest, enter into the closet and close the door. Well, I remember as a child hearing somebody preach on that or having it in Sunday school or something, and, and I really tried to go into the closet. Now, now, when I was a kid living in the parsonage out in the Toma, little old dinky parsonage, and the closets were tiny, and uh, they would seem to be so full, and I just had a hard time squeezing into my closet and pulling the curtain. We didn't have a door, but we had a curtain across it, and yet I thought, you know, that's what I was supposed to do, get into the closet and pray. 
Well, I found out that it doesn't mean that you literally get into a closet, but it does mean that you get into a place where you shut the door to everything else except what you've got to talk to God about and what you're going to allow Him to talk to you about. So, you know, we do need to enter the closet and shut the door. We need to turn off our wandering mind. We need to do anything that will eliminate distraction and get in a quiet place before God and focus on Him. I have to confess that's hard for me to do. I have to confess there's many a day that I wish I had gone into the closet and shut the door. Uh, my day would have gone a lot better had I done so. So, you know, you need to sometimes just kind of find a, a way to shut your mind off and to get it focused on prayer. Get it focused on communion with God. Our lives will be so much better for it. Heavenly Father, help us to find those quiet times. Lord, when we shut the world out, when we shut everybody else out, and it's just us and God, do help us, Lord, as we struggle with our prayer life, that we might make it more of a priority. We ask in Christ's name, amen. Well, find that quiet time today now and shut the world out and focus on God. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.